Hello again. What I have here is a new video for all the self-publishing people and the people who really need to DIY their covers. Now this is about designing a book cover in Affinity Photo or Designer or Publisher and you can do it equally well in all three. But these are the design principles. I won't actually be designing a cover. I've done that already in other videos that you'll find in my uh, playlists, in the various playlists. Look for book covers. Now this is book cover, is book cover design for the self-publisher. Creating your own book covers with Affinity. If you're reading this, then you already know that book cover design is important and people do judge books by their covers. The only thing you need to understand clearly is that modern ebook covers serve only one purpose, and that is to get the reader to click on the book description. Exactly the same for print books. The only thing that matters about your book cover is its effectiveness in selling your book, not the design concept, not the expense of designing it, not how much time you spent creating it. If you're a self-publishing author and are starting out on a very low budget, a homemade DIY book cover is a practical solution. Unless you make a truly appalling one, it won't hurt your sales. <laughs> there are some really bad ones out there. So just take your time. Be careful. So let's begin. We'll see what steps and principles to use to create a good looking cover. Now the anatomy of a book cover design is fairly simple. The three most important elements are the title, the subtitle and the author name. Your book title is the first thing people read. Sometimes the only thing. You need to communicate what the book is all about, literally and visually. The typeface should be appropriate and the biggest element on the cover. It's the most important thing after all, isn't it? The subtitle may be helpful to clarify the title, but people will usually read about the book in the description, so don't make the subtitle a long story. The subtitle there, Awakening, is simply alerting the reader that it's one of a series, and this happens to be the first in the series. And the size of your author name doesn't depend on how famous you are. The best solution to this is to look at other titles in your genre. If everyone else uses big author names, make yours big too. But don't exaggerate. Sometimes really big names are actually brand names as well. So the cover layout is thus. Usually the text is set out like this with the book title, the author name and the subtitle or tagline. You will notice a variation on this cover and of course you can vary it. It's not fixed in stone. But the subtitle here is right below the title to awaken the person, well it's awakening, to alert the person that it is one of a series. <coughs> Excuse me. Now you can put a blurb on a cover and you'll see in this one there are there is a blurb up the top right hand side. Other elements can appear such as reviews, blurbs, best selling author tag and version number and you can compare the previous cover with this one. Now be careful I might add here with putting a best selling author tag on there. Don't put best selling author on there unless you are. You'll be raising people's expectations unnecessarily and if your story is not a best selling story you're going to disappoint a whole world of readers. So be careful with that one. Now six design secrets used to create book covers that pop out. Do this carefully. You need to get your head around the nature of the ideas. This is the most creative part of this video. Well designed book covers 
have used some basic principles that every professional designer must know. These principles are applied to all designed advertisements, banners, posters, brochures and book covers. Let's start with the four basic ones and then we'll follow on with the last two. So the first four are contrast, repetition, alignment and proximity. They complement each other so we'll usually use several together, rarely one on their own. Now contrast is the most powerful design principle that is used for creating focal points. That's why the most important element of your cover should be the most emphasised. And the most important element is, of course, the title. Contrast can be achieved in many ways, with empty versus filled space. Elements isolated or grouped top to bottom, dark versus light, cool versus warm, small versus big, visually different elements, typographic contrast. Now, contrast only works well if the difference between elements is apparent and you've got a good deal of contrast there. That cover is number one, lots of empty space. The second one, elements isolated or grouped bottom to top. And you can see that they're grouped bottom to top there. The elements are isolated. The third one, dark versus light. And here you've got pure red text on a pure yellow background. That's lots of space. And they're well grouped. That's a very stark cover that fits into another thing that we'll come to later on. Now this is number four, cool versus warm. You can see the cover background here and the image of the young woman behind the word red. They're quite cool colours. But red this time is not actually red, it's an, it's an orangey red. It's a warmer colour rather than a hot colour. So cool versus warm. Now this is small versus big. And contrast achieved in many ways here. This is number five. You've got very small text for the author name, very large text and bright red for the title. Number six visually different elements. This doesn't mean lots of different pictures. It can be as simple as a different font. Now you can see I've got a complete story right up the top there. That's a very small script type font. Then plain Garamond and the red is a different font again. The three fonts on that cover Maybe a bit much. The one at the top, the complete story, may be better off the same font <coughs> as the word red. But that's something you can change as you go along. Don't get fixated on one design and certainly don't clutter it. But they're certainly visually different elements. Now, repetition. Put simply, the principle of repetition means that you repeat the same or similar design elements throughout the design of your visual. This ties together separate elements off your design and gives a sense of unity and consistency. Repetition is used to make sure that the, the design is viewed as a whole. Now look at the cover on the right. The connected elements, the repetition, is in the red text. Top right in the blurb, a killer on the loose, the word the, and the word killer. So a killer is on the loose, the winter killer. Typefaces, styles, and colors are repeated to create a united feeling and design. 
Contrast is provided by the snow white background. Now alignment number one, there's a couple of different things in alignment. Centered, nothing in your doors in your design should look as though it's placed randomly. You don't just plonk words on the page. Aligning your elements helps the audience read your message in the right sequence. In general, there are only four ways you can align your design. If you think about that, that's true. So let's look at them from a design point of view. One of the easiest types of alignment is centered alignment. Popular with beginning graphic designers, but used without creativity, it can look, hmm, boring. But that one there on the right, the red affair, is all center aligned. And it's not too bad. There's lots of white space left there. Mind you, they refer to it as white space. It can be any colour. Centred example 2. This example shows centred alignment with interesting formatting. Text, shapes, colours and fonts are used to attract interest. And you can see there that the word red has been put on its side. There's a huge image of a gun and so on. And the colour itself will attract the eye. It's also very on genre. Now, alignment. There are different West alignment statuses here. The first one was center, this one's left. Left alignment means that text or graphical elements are lined up evenly with the left margin. Good practice is to use explicit lines. Images with explicit outlines allows you to align the text along with it. This can create a powerful and interesting effect. This is left alignment 2. Images with explicit outlines, I'm saying it again, allows you to align the text along it. This can create a powerful and interesting effect. Now you can see there I've got the red spy aligned along the lines of the pattern on the cover. Right alignment, obviously, means that text is lined up evenly with the right margin. It gives a unique and unconventional look and works well with short text. It is most used to complement the background image. And you can see there that the background image stands alone from the text, which is all moved to right alignment, except for the um, tag line at the top. Now, justified alignment is created by aligning your text evenly along the left and right margins. This can give your book cover a more formal and organised look. Of course there are exceptions, but unless you are a professional designer with a good feel for composition, it's much safer to follow the rules. And you can see there, it may not look like it's justified, but it is. Now, Jack Vicious hasn't been spread out to align with the Winter Killer because it would, it would, um, what's the word I'm looking for here? It would conflict with the design. The key word, the title, Winter Killer, is justified alignment. And that's how I wanted that design to look. Reducing clutter is number four, proximity. The main purpose of proximity is to reduce clutter and organise information. It gives your reader a clear structure to improve readability. If your eye stops for more than three to five times, then consider grouping information. You can't have the title, subtitle, picture and author name fighting for attention. Consider this example. The related elements and information are grouped closely together. They become one visual unit. title, subtitle, image, and author name. Again, centre aligned, but grouped, because there, there is quite a bit of information there. The last two design elements to consider are white space. When you put elements in, 
the undefined white space of your new page, active white space occurs. It's an important part of every design because it helps make contrasts and emphasize the most important elements of your design. And I mentioned before, white space is just a term. Actually, it can be any color. And in this example, it's actually red. And it's a red design, red pattern, a texture. Now this is a good example of white space that is actually yellow. Don't be afraid of empty space in your design. Don't be tempted to fill it up as it can actually function to create a good looking design. Ask yourself, do you really need all those titles, texts and images on your cover? It's much better to create a simple and easily legible cover than a clever and complex one that is difficult to understand. Simple and minimalistic covers are more legible, which is important for online stores. And that one there, you could see from across the street, never mind on another shelf in the store. Now, focal points. You'll already have noticed that some books just pop out on the bookshelf or online store. They grab your attention right off. It's most likely that these books have strong focal points. In other words, the focal point is an eye-catching part that stands out and is distinct from the rest of the design. Its the purpose is to catch and hold the viewer's attention. If your book cover doesn't have a focal point, it can go unnoticed. So use the following six techniques to create focal points. Number one, use contrast. Use contrast to create a focal point by manipulating the space through colour choice, by size and by creating elements that are visually different and by typographic contrasts. And you can see that one there, the image of the person in the middle, slightly different text for the author name and the title in very small print down the bottom. Quite a contrasting cover. Emphasize only one element. Decide which element in your photo clearly communicates the concept of your book. Remove or reduce all other elements that may be in the way. So I've reduced the author name at the top slightly. Put it in plain white. The title at the bottom is in plain white. And I've changed the color of the coat that the woman's wearing. You can still faintly see the trees through the dark, but the woman's coat stands out, and it's very noticeably a person on a, on a forest track, perhaps. Or you can go extremely big. Now we're back to that image again. Make one element of your cover extremely big. It can be either the image or the text. A simple technique that gives professional results. And you've got both there, quite large text for the title and a huge background image. There's no mistaking that pistol. Use faces and silhouettes. This is the favourite of everybody. Everybody loves silhouettes, especially the man walking away from camera. Have a look through the bookstores and see how many covers you can see that has a man on a lonely road walking away from camera. There are thousands, so vary what you've got slightly. Now, facial expressions communicate emotions and feelings very well, which helps set the mood for your book and trigger emotions for your readers. Let readers use their own imaginations. Don't try and put all your character on your book cover. You'll just create clutter. The image on the right is designed to indicate the genre as well as using the silhouette as a focal point. What do you suppose the genre of that book will be? You're probably quite right if you say romance. Now, direct the gaze. Humans have a natural tendency to follow the gaze of others. Our training since birth has been to follow directions. Arrows are good for that. And you can use this to take the viewer's eyes to a point you want them to focus on. 
an arrow, a face looking at your book title, even better if they're pointing to it as well. Now you can see I've got a very large arrow there, going home, indicating you're heading off in some direction. Using symbols, try to find a symbolic way of showing what your book is about. A symbol that almost anyone will recognise at first sight. Symbols work fine in fiction, as in the Murder Club, and non-fiction, as in 5 Pip 4X. Very recognisable symbols on the bottom of that page. Now, six design concepts. Easy to use concepts that work for every genre. These are design concepts. Full bleed images. The easiest technique for creating your book cover design is to use full bleed images. These are images that extend right out to the bleed edge of your design. Some of it will be trimmed off because it's right for the bleed, jet, bleed edge. So up the top there we've got treasure, the word. Make sure that's not over the bleed line margin. You don't want a book with half the E trimmed off or the beginning of the T trimmed off or even worse the author name down the bottom trimmed off. If you decide to cover the whole cover with the picture make sure that there's an area with enough contrast for your title. Pattern backgrounds will reduce readability as will spelling mistakes like will will. Now the rule of thirds. The rule of thirds is one more technique. Hmm, I've really got some spelling issues here, haven't I? For creating good looking book covers. Imagine that you're splitting the image, your cover, into nine equal parts by drawing two vertically equally spaced lines and two equally spaced horizontal lines. According to the rule, important compositional elements should be placed along these lines or their intersections to emphasize the main areas of your design. You don't even need to draw the grid, you can just imagine it. But you can see the thirds I've got there. The top line, the title and author, and the image at the bottom. The rule of thirds. Use cropped images. You don't always have to use the whole image. Often you'll get a much better result by using only a fragment of the picture. If your image contains more face than body, the eyes and facial expression will communicate emotions and feelings. Now the image of the woman I have there is a full size image, but I've just cropped it to use uh, a, a section of her face. Title and author name. That cover needs a bit more work, but it's emphasising what I'm talking about, which is cropped images. Indeed, all of these images need more work. But, as I say, they're not finished images. They're examples to emphasise the points I'm making here. Now, the Z layout refers to the route that Western people's eyes travel when they read. Left to right, top to bottom. From left to the right, then diagonal to the left bottom corner, then to the right bottom corner. That's how you look at things naturally, and this has been scientifically proven. So if your elements are in that grouping, then you're in the right place. You can experiment with this by reversing images, by putting elements where they don't belong, and, and you can see that they just don't fit. It feels wrong. Now five is flat design. This has become very popular these days. Flat design, or Swiss design it was, as it was formerly called, became popular in the 1920s. It has become popular again in the 21st century. Where is it used? The flat design is widely used in web design and it's also used for book cover design. You don't use any elements that would give effects to the text. No 3D, no standout, no drop shadows. To give emphasis, contrast and a lot of empty space is used. Your design concept should be as minimalist and with as few elements 
as possible. Use symbols. Do you have a motif that's recurring in your book content, a person, a symbol or a landscape? Rather than a lot of complexity on the cover, keep the focus on a single symbolic image and use a lot of white space to not be overwhelming or confusing. If you're using stock photos, it's rather difficult to find a photo that represents a specific scene. So don't do it. Instead, keep the focus on a single symbolic image and use a lot of white space, or in this case, black space. Now that's the end of this session. This has been a very brief journey through the basics of good book cover design. I do hope you've gained some insights into the process. Don't be afraid to give it a try. If you've written the book, you can design the cover. I don't know how many times I see on the various um, groups on the internet people saying, oh, I've written a book, but I need to pay £700 for a new cover and I don't have the money. What do I do? Make it yourself. If you've written the book, you can do the cover. Don't rush it. And don't be afraid to ask for opinions. Make friends with a good public library librarian. They generally see thousands of books a day, so will know a standout cover when they see one. But give it a go. Try. You can do it. So, thanks for watching. Don't for forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Click on the like, or that's the thumbs up, and click on the bell. You'll be notified of new videos when they arrive. I really appreciate it. Thanks for watching.